dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. Welcome again to your theater of stars, Proudly We Hail, the United States Army and Air Force presentation. And starting the first of the year, a full half hour. Well, football is king with the playing of bowl games from coast to coast. And our story today concerns a very particular football. It's called Touchdown, and it stars Ralph Morgan as Father Donnelly. And now, Act One. Father Donnelly and the Church of the Blessed Sacrament had known each other a long, long time. And the good father had cherished a dream throughout that long acquaintance. That's why he looked forward with keen anticipation to the arrival of a very important visitor that morning. And as he sat in his small, neat office, he was oblivious to everything, even to the sound of the boys playing football in the yard outside, as he waited for the knock on the door from Mrs. Wilkins, his housekeeper, announcing his visitor. Father, it's Mrs. Wilkins. Well, come in, Mrs. Wilkins. Oh, I have a casualty, Father. A casualty? Where? It's me, Father. Well, now, Timmy, football. What do you think you are? Johnny Lujack? I'd like to be. Well, I dare say your nose isn't in agreement with your intention. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see the iodine, Mr. Wood. Yes, Father. And why do you have to come bothering me when I have important things of my own? It's your fault, Father. Your reverse to the weak side didn't work. They smeared me. Yeah, so I see. Well, you must have tipped it off, then. My reverse to the weak side is a perfect play. Well, it's a perfect play. But the other team knew all about it. Well, then, both sides are even. Here's the iodine, Father. Now, thank you. Oh, Silver. Uh -huh, well. Ow! Ah, there, now. Mm, that sting. Now, I think you can go back into action. Thank you, Father. What were you boys playing football for, anyway? I thought you told me a car ran over your ball yesterday. We, we got another ball. I borrowed one. You borrowed one? Yes, Father. Well, you be sure and return it. No kicking, mind you. I want none of my windows kicked out like last week and the, the week before. Yes, Father. Now, scamper along with you. And don't play too rough. <laughs> Your Uncle Ted fought in business this morning. I want nothing to distract him. <laughs> Yes? Come here to the window. I think it's him now, Mr. King. Well, if it is it really, where? Down there. He's watching the boys play in football. Mm, he seems pleased, doesn't he? That's a good sign. Yes. Well, Mrs. Wilkins, hold a good thought for me. I will, Father. I'll go downstairs to meet him. All right, Father. Well, good morning, Ted. Good morning, Father. Come in, won't you? Say, isn't that a sight out there? <laughs> the boys playing football? Yes, and how they play. Rock and sock. And, say, did you see that nephew of mine, Jimmy? That nose. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just performed a little repair job on that nose. Reminds me of the Northwestern game, Father. Many years ago. <laughs> I got a shoe right on my face. And you could count the cleat marks for a month. <laughs> it's a great game. <laughs> well, well, Ted, I, I think it does build character. Builds bone and muscle, too. You know, Father, I was thinking, it's a shame for boys to have to play on that gravel out there. They should have a field of their own. That's right, they should. Now, I've got a lot up here, about four blocks, doing nothing but bringing in tax bills every year. I'm going to turn it over to them, and in a week's time, they'll have a real football field. Ted, that's, that's indeed a wonderful thought. And I'm so glad you came over this morning with, with charity in your heart. <clears throat> uh, yes, Father. Now, uh, what was it you had on your mind? Is it the furnace? No, the furnace is working quite well. Is the roof leaking? No, it isn't the roof. Well, what is it then? Ted, I, uh, I know you're a very practical man. And I try to be the same. The parish is now in better condition than it ever was. 
And I have waited until conditions were right before even thinking of what I am about to request. What are you getting at, Father? Hmm. You see that window there? Yes. When we built the church, that was to be a unique part of its beauty. But we ran out of funds. And I suppose it has been forgotten by most everyone but me. I want to change it. Change it? What's wrong with it? Glass is good, gives plenty of light. Ted, I have long dreamed of a beautiful stained glass mosaic window. And you're the only one in the parish who can put it there. Well, are windows safe around here with kids playing football? <laughs> you just solved that. But these things cost a lot of money, don't they? Oh, I, I don't want the most expensive, mind you. As a matter of fact, I, I can get a very beautiful one installed for around $200. Two? $200 for a window? But this will be a very special one. And the light and the colors, I, I'm sure, will bring inspiration to many. That is probably very true, Father. And it has been such a long, cherished dream of mine. I can understand that, too. Father, I don't like to let you down on any request. Uh, I know that. But you hit the nail on the head a minute ago. I am a practical man. I've always lived by the practical rule. And I just can't see putting out that kind of money for a window. Even if I might have the money. Of course. Now, if the heating system goes on the blink, termites get into the floor, that's fine, fine. Call me. I want you to call me. Well, i better get down to the office. Yeah, it is getting late. Well, goodbye, Father. You understand my logic, don't you? Oh, yes, there's logic in many things. Many things. Oh, look at those kids go. Rock and sock, rock and sock. Well, Father, what did he say, Mr. King, say? Well, Ted wasn't of a mind for windows this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. No, now, don't you fret. Perhaps he was right. He does love children. Look, he's stopping to play with them. He's oh, going to carry the ball. He'd better, <laughs> He'd better watch out. He'd better watch out. He's down on the ground. Mr. King is laid out. Come on, Mrs. Wilkins. We have another casualty. Timmy, now what have you done to your poor Uncle Ted? Hey, it wasn't our fault, Father. No, then whose was it? It was yours. Mine? Sure. Uncle Ted tried your reverse to the weak side. Oh, 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 oh. We pause briefly from our story, Touchdown, starring Ralph Morgan, to bring you an important message. Men, you high school graduates can have your choice of training in the Army. Yes, and you can make your selection before you enlist. A three-, four-, or five-year enlistment in the regular Army means you can choose the skill or trade that appeals to you and be assured of receiving that training. If you're not accepted for the Army Technical School of your choice, you're under no obligation to enlist. And don't forget this, men. That high Army pay starts the day you sign your name on the enlistment papers. Listen to this list of some of the things you can learn. Radio, electricity, refrigeration, automotive mechanics, engineer drafting, watch repair, and nearly a hundred more. Take advantage of this opportunity, high school graduates. Ask your local Army and Air Force recruiting officer for the details today. Then let him help you make out your application for Army technical training. Now act two of Touchdown, starring Ralph Morgan as Father Donnelly. Ted King, the second casualty of the day, has been revived and sent shakily to work. It is afternoon. The boys are back for another game with the football Tim had borrowed. In the church, Mrs. Wilkins knows what occupies Father Donnelly's thoughts. Father, can't I fix you up something to eat? No, no thank you. A sandwich, perhaps. You barely touched your lunch. I am not exactly hungry, thank you. It's the window, isn't it, Father? Ah, oh, yes. If I just had the money myself. No, no. If it were meant for us to have it, Mrs. Wilkins, I'm sure the Lord will provide a way. <laughs> well, what's that? What? I sure and they've kicked the ball through the window again. 
Well, this is the last time you'll have the opportunity. Well, come on now. Which one of you did it? Speak up. I did, Father. Huh. It isn't enough that you skin your nose and knock out your Uncle Ted all in one day. Yes, Father. And you couldn't pick out just one of me plain, ordinary windows. You had to pick out the one which someday I hope will be the beauty spot of the church. I'm sorry, Father. Of course you're sorry. And you should be. You promised me no kicking. Run and tackle. Rock and sock, but no kicking. Well, there's only one thing I can do. Oh, no, Father. Yes, I'm afraid so. No more football on the ground. But, Father... Now, it isn't as much of a penalty as it should be. Your Uncle Ted is clearing off a lot in the neighborhood. A new football field will be ready in a week. Oh, boy! Now, I'll be running along with you. Go on. But, Father, the ball... Uh, you cannot have that until the field is ready. But, Father, I've got to have that ball. Enough of that. You cannot have it. And believe me, for I am man to lose myself in emotion. And, uh... And I dare say there's a marked possibility that out of the trouble I've had today, I'd burn that football up in the incinerator. Father Donnelly, Father Donnelly. What are you doing here this hour of the evening? Where is he? Where's Father Donnelly? Oh, why, he's in his office upstairs. They did break the window, didn't why, they? Why, yes, but... That's great, that's great. I thought it might have been something else. I thought maybe they lost it. Who is it, Mrs. Wilkins? Oh, well, Ted. Hello, Father. You didn't burn it in the incinerator, did you? Burn what? The football Timmy kicked through your window. Oh, no. It's up on my desk. Oh, Father Donnelly. Oh, you're a champ. I am. You most certainly are. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to replace that window with the best stained glass window money can buy. Well, bless me. This is some sort of a miracle. What relief to get that ball back. Timmy went up to the house. My wife ups and gives it to him. But what is so unique about that football? What's unique about it? That football. That football, Father. That was the ball I kicked the field goal with that beat Michigan 20 years ago. <laughs> curtain falls in the final act of Touchdown. Our star, Ralph Morgan, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. You men with former service in the armed forces, you can choose your theater of service in the Army or Air Force. You can select assignment to Europe, or you can, at your request, be assigned near home in your own Army area for at least a year. Or else, and this goes for non-veterans too, you can enlist for direct assignment to Japan or Korea. Get complete details right away from your Army and Air Force recruiting officer. Now here again is our star, Ralph Morgan, and our producer. Ralph, you've given us a delightful portrayal. Many thanks. It's indeed a privilege, C.P., to appear on Proudly We Hail. And I'd like to add my own nice going on the new half-hour format. Uh, thank you very much, Ralph. When does the new show start? The first show will be released the week of January the 15th. Well, that's good news for the new year particularly when it concerns a show doing a job as such a worthwhile sponsor. And they don't come more worthwhile than Uncle Sam's army. That's right. <laughs> and now, C.P., your audience will want to know who's starring on your next show. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, we have a delightful comedy on tap for you titled Bury Me Not. And our star will be that clever and versatile young motion picture actor, Donald O'Connor. Make plans now to be with us next week. Again, thanks to Ralph Morgan who appeared to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearances of all motion picture stars on this program. Remember, Proudly We Hail will soon come to you a full half hour long. And now until next week, when Proudly We Hail presents Donald O'Connor, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs>